the next set of games that are happening that I'm not sure if we even went to the end we did it's one, there's one game that matters mm-hmm. and the next pool is Saracen's pool ah, yes. um, pool which three. is pool 3 indeed Saracen's mm-hmm. in Glasgow I should say uh, who are playing each other this weekend and mm-hmm. that's the game that happens on Saturday afternoon early Saturday afternoon um, yeah what happened last week was the uh, two sides did what they needed to do got mm-hmm. an extra five points on the board got themselves in the position to uh, to well Saracens are in pole position I mean yeah. they're it was teeing up what is the pool decider and it, it, was it, 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 it what might be theoretically the pool decider it is the pool decider man I'm not I'm not treating Glasgow's uh, first of all if Glasgow win 4-0 which would be an amazing they result they still don't get first Unless they win by some cricket score meant points, no, Without getting they need five, to win yeah. five nil to top yeah. the group. Like things that aren't going to happen. Like, <laughs> I'll take that in the Venn diagram. Yeah, yeah. Of things that aren't going to happen. I'm, I'm not disputing that that's um, right. Your assessment of it, and yeah. much as I do like Glasgow and wish them well, I, that's exactly what yeah. I suspect won't happen. Is a five nil win, but I'm still the not pool the, decider. It's a pool decider, <laughs> <laughs> and it is. And Glasgow can win it by five points to nil if all things go yeah, he's playing very loosely with the word can <laughs> yeah. uh, yes I'm I'm hopeful for them but I'm not really expectant yeah. of anything other than as Sarri's professionalism and like Sarri's are a team who we've been kind of, they, they didn't even feature that heavily in our podcast last week because we're, they're just purring along and then mm. they did justice to that by doing exactly scoring exactly 28 points four yeah. converted tries no more no less 10 points for Leon fine they scored something <laughs> we'll move on yeah. And like Saris have been timing their season very well. It was lovely to see Billy V it seems off a line out, like flicking passes yeah. into the midfield as well. This bodes yeah. well for their chances. It going seems forward. to me like they've slowed down hmm. um, because because they were going so f- they were going like a freight train in in the early season. And it mm-hmm. seems to me almost deliberately yeah. like they've pulled the brakes, eased mm-hmm. up, and gone. We eased need, up we need, more we need so to, than pulled the brakes, but yeah, keep yeah. the engine in good nick yeah. so we can rev it up again mm-hmm. in April. Well, like um, as as we have always touted them as like the only English club that gets it, yes, and they do, um, and that's as, on that's strictly on the field. We know about their off the field issues. Yes, it's literally, it's Mark McCall down that yes. get it. Yeah, um, yeah, and they're yeah. a very very organised outfit, and they have aspirations for every season, most of which involve yeah. winning both comps, <laughs> because mm. they want to win both comps because they're that calibre of side. They want their third star on their jersey. Speaking of all this four star talk last week, Saris are are there but thereabouts their, their two stars are slightly more intimidating than the likes of Bath's two stars or Wasp's two stars that aren't even there for some reason on their that's kit weird, yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know what that's about but uh, no Saris are a team that understand how a season works and like this is something we've been so impressed with Leinster in their winning form that like peaking at the right time is, is a real thing and it's, it's such a, a thing that the teams get wrong Claremont Claremont the biggest, the biggest most you know, guilty of December getting wrong. team there's yeah, ever been yeah racking up cricket scores in Ulster December. actually as well Ulster can do that as well yeah, yeah. but it's like Ulster like the more modern iteration of Ulster have never even got towards well, they had one final a few years yes. ago against us yeah, which yeah, was yeah. a great run to the final but they're they're not uh, uh, they're, they're, they're not, not worried about game to game and that's right yeah. for them because yeah. like the, at the place they are as a team they need to be thinking that way whereas mm. Saris are at a place where they're looking for excellence and this means that at this point in the season yeah. it's functional yeah. it's everyone's kind of saving themselves mm-hmm. Owen, Owen Farrell's getting very close to the cotton wool for Six Nation times yeah. he's just being going to be wrapped up in the bubble wrap but uh, he will do the job on Glasgow first and the second the, gla- the job is done they'll he'll be removed off. from yeah, the field yeah. and they'll let the young boys which they've been doing a lot this season as well we've yep. seen a lot of like low, not even it's not even half strength because the, the, the side similar to what Leinster do it's like a hot, it feels like a hodgepodge team because yeah. there are a few senior heads in there and then there'll be a few a few kind of academy lads or, or the second yeah, string yeah they've like they've moved roads into Jackson Ray's jersey a few times and yeah. Jackson Ray in again as well they, they, they've definitely got a nice balance and shape to them mm-hmm. when Brad Barrett went down injured in that Exeter game yeah. it seemed to change things for them a bit they went on to really get shellacked in that Exeter game which mm-hmm. wasn't like them to get sh- proper mm-hmm. shellacked by anybody no. um, and then the weeks that have been coming they've been a little soft defensively the week since they mm-hmm. lost that game to Sale yes. like it looks like yeah. you know club captain down one of those things like when, when Rory Best goes down for Ireland also you just have that extra problem of having Farrell as your captain and it's like mm-hmm. it's the exact same problem that Sexton has with it he's too aggressive with refs mm-hmm. he's too in their faces he's too living and dying every moment of yeah. the game rather yeah. than being you know, kind relaxed of relaxed yes. talking to the ref mm-hmm. and it, the defence has suffered as well but it looked to me like last week's game as much as it was functional 
Mm-hmm. There was a bit of problem solving in there, so it certainly mm-hmm. it helped that your man Tompkins at thirteen played well. Yes, played he did. Stormer yeah. scored two tries. Yeah, that's what you that's what you want to see. Obviously, Tompkins, I think it is. Yeah. Um, Tompkins, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was it, like he looked sprightly. He looked like a good thirteen. Lazowski at twelve, as we know, is no slouch. He's a big presence. Yeah. yeah. So they didn't look shy in in that department, and they also for having all of those guys on those wide passy guys at 10, 12, 13 mm-hmm. like England some, sometimes have you could accuse them of potentially going to be a bit lateral which yeah. they've been quite a bit this season mm-hmm. going too wide too soon you've mm-hmm. seen it from Saracens yes. but they corrected it um, yeah. big time against Leon. they went narrow a lot well they Just also noticed that Leon had terrible problems getting around the corner and yeah. they, they did manufacture a few of them a few like subtle little holds beyond the rook but that's enough and yeah. then an inside ball is an insta try yeah. because like there's no Leon man there or there are two of them pushing off and it's yeah the disorganisation of that club has been a, a feature of this group as well which is why Saris are comfortably sitting top as far as points accumulated across the board yeah. um, because yeah Leon haven't been at the races but also Saris kind of teed up their whole season with that impressive win in Scotston in, uh, they in did. Glasgow they did and that they've, they've been happy to purr along and obviously not so happy to see Brad Barrett go down in a game against a tough game against Exeter, which yeah. is is miserable for our little pet pet like, love for him. Well, pet love it for was him, but also a yeah. pet wish for him to get into the Six Nations yeah, squad. Tom Brown, yeah, that's, that's going to be another year gone as far as that's and concerned. That's and this that's World, World Cup, Cup. Like, that's his career. So he's not like much as we've been trying to get Brad Barrett in there because mm. recognizing that like Sarri's a class, and yes, Owen but Farrell's we, a part of that, and yes, yeah. and that, like Lazowski can do some class stuff. So maybe get him into the England squad, but the the bones of that back line is Farrell. Uh, outside him, Brad Barrett, club captain. Outside them in the wide channels, Alex Good. Yeah. All of them linking very, very well, allowing yeah. for them to play that, that formatted shape where it's and there's a lot of screens. Welsh, Scottish of, wingers. Yeah, they're nice as well. Flashy yeah, finishers. And Sean Maitland. I mean, it's yeah. all good. It's yeah. all, that whole back line, it's all very good. Mm-hmm. The Brad Barrett situation is a weird one because it was yeah. a concussion. Yeah. And it was in December now. It was in mid December, or mm-hmm. I mean, it was uh, it was after the double headers in December that they played Exeter. Right. Yeah. Um, just before Christmas, we so. haven't seen him since. Yeah. So it could be precaution. Head injuries are one of those really scary yeah, it's ones. It's tough. But then there are these been... like these stories of people like Jared Payne for Ireland last season, who like was a whole season coming back, and then eventually it's just no, I'm not coming back. Yeah, and that can be the case with a head injury. So you just never know. No, um, and he for has a man like tough as nails. At the, start, at the start of the season, he had surgery on a, his cheek after a right. collision, and he was out That's of another right. game. So. Too many blows to the head. Ask ask a boxer about it. It's not good. He goes, like, he goes to war, Brad Barrett. Yes, he he puts on his jersey. He's a brilliant, brilliant defender. Mm-hmm. And they are missing him. But at they the are. same time, they've they've done a lovely job. Mm-hmm. Um, seeing off this part of the season, getting themselves to top seeds, and now they have the challenge against Glasgow. Yeah. Who uh-huh. had uh, a, a weirder time of it at the weekend against yeah, Cardiff. Okay. I actually watched we, we, that, they were those were two games that were played simultaneously and I was watching the, the Glasgow game because yeah. it was just it was more consequential I'd, like from very early on and even bef- like weeks ago it was apparent what was going to happen in the Saris game even if it was away from yes, but yeah, on yeah. Sunday in Leon they were going to run in four tries yeah. and nothing more yeah. so that was fine I left them to it I watched the highlights <laughs> after but I did watch Glasgow flounder and struggle to put away a Cardiff side who they enjoyed pack supremacy over, which is like not a thing in Glasgow's acumen this no, season indeed. at all. Like Edinburgh demonstrated in their back to back fixtures that they're not at the races physically in the pack. Yeah. But at the same time they were bullying that Cardiff side, which is a problem for Cardiff. Um but all the same, Cardiff came storm back into it, made it a really dogged affair in the second half and Glasgow floundered their way and I'm impressed with their final try. They did manage to get it over the line, see it done. It kind of probably suited them to have that like Cardiff are always good for a, a Hells Bells kind of ding dong ding battle, dong battle yeah, where we're yeah. going to score a load of tries and Glasgow knew going into this week that no no fewer than four tries was going to be needed out of this fixture because so they're going to run with it yeah it's, possibly a bit of that but also yeah. like not not all of that was controlled because no, Cardiff it was, broke uh, them they, constantly like, um, they were ahead by about I think 16 points there thereabouts and then Cardiff with two tries came right back into it sure. might have even been more than 16 points um, their mm-hmm. ability to not like as a team that wants that has aspirations about being in the top eight in Europe that may well be after this weekend like y- you have to be able to as, as one of those top teams say all right we're ahead of Cardiff yeah. we're going to stop them from doing what they do we're mm-hmm. going to get out of the line we're going to tackle them we're going to make stuff hard for them when yeah. we get the ball we're going to put it in the place that they can't attack from mm-hmm. we're going to just manage a game and they were just 
woefully un- 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 unable yeah. to do it. But they've, um, like, that's in all least. departments, the defence in particular was like as good Shams. as Cardiff were with their quick hands. I mean, there were guys, there were winners cutting in, there were centres drifting off. There, none of it seemed organised. No, um, and then all of it in the midst of it all, there were just sh- soft shoulder missed tackles going yeah. on all over there. Which has been a feature of their season, yeah. to be honest. And it's a problem. And you know, like, you can't win rugby games by falling off that many tackles. But they did against Cardiff. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> that can be the case. And like they, they got their, five, their four tries, so fair play to them. It was a tough exercise. I just really have doubts about their pack this season. I, I just seen and their halfbacks and their Ali, half-back, Ali Price and such, yeah. such a problem. Like they they just drop tastings in favour of. Oh, I can't yeah, we sort of in our little absence, in our month long absence, we missed the the fall from grace for Adam Hastings. Yes. Just very poor performances in a row. Yeah, it's Flaky. It's, it's always very strange when you get a young lad living off a name. It mm. seems like even in the cases, the positive cases like Entomac and Ruddock, mm-hmm. it seems like like. There is a bit of, uh, you know, who his dad is. Let's get him in the team. You see that going a lot in rugby. Mm-hmm. Um, and as much as you have your positive stories, you also have your negative stories. And there was no way that Adam Hastings was ready mm-hmm. to have the responsibility that was thrust on him, thrust True. on him. True. And he's he still wasn't there. Uh, to be fair to him, he's, he's still a, a talented, talent. he's a, he's a talented young prospect. Yeah. And he is. Like, he's not just coasting on his name. I wouldn't, wouldn't. That's not what I'm trying to say. No, I know. I know yeah, it's yeah. not at all. And, but I'm just going to clear that up. Like, it's not like that. But, like, yes. They lost Finn last season and they found this guy and the whole early part of the season was like, look who it is. Yeah, the there, was like, there was like Sky Sports <laughs> montages yeah. of like, oh, remember Gavin Hastings. Yeah. Well, now we've had him Hastings. Yes. And he's going to go and be the Scottish 10 and win the World Cup for Scotland. Yeah. But all yeah. that kind of fanciful thought. Yeah. And what happened had to happen first was Glasgow had to front up physically and not miss tackles. But also their like their halfbacks have kind of derailed in the last, in the last few weeks because for a team that's that wants to flick it wide that much they've just been so inaccurate in that yeah. slow at times in that can't certainly when you when you pick Ali Price he kind of worked for the game that was in it last week against um against Cardiff because mm-hmm. it was it was they actually could do the job in the tight yeah. areas and Ali Price is pretty good mm-hmm. in those tight areas and managing mm-hmm. those offensive sets true when you're in the opposition 22 but what he isn't is quick no and what Glasgow are supposed to be is quick yeah. at least what they want to well, be. he got snagged a few too many times for my liking as yeah. much as like he's maybe good at managing those tight games in those tight exchanges he often gets snagged so if they yeah. go go four or five pick and carries then suddenly there's no scrum half because he's at the bottom of the last contact yeah. he lost and <laughs> it's like no yeah. Don't do that. Uh, as much as you don't have to flash it right, just get rid of it yourself because you need to be there to do so if there's a yeah. chance. Um, yeah, no, they're, 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 as much as they're probably going to get through get through now, the way, having done that, hopefully they can get a, a losing bonus point, but it's not really that consequential. Yeah, anyway. no. they, want, they want to put in a performance, but they will be going away in the quarterfinals more than likely. It was a good um, thing is that uh, in terms of momentum, mm-hmm. this week doesn't matter as much as most weeks because... There is no real momentum from around six to mm. um, the the quarterfinal. There's yeah. so long a gap. No, it's, in it's April. the Six Nations that gets everyone yeah. ready for that. Exactly. And like, yeah, exactly. So there is there is no real direct reality. So what they really need is just to hope that um, that Edinburgh their their comrades do the job, and then they won't have to do anything in this game. Yeah. Um, but they'll know by the time kickoff comes whether or not they need to do anything. Yeah. Against Saracens, but uh, long term they have some problems that obviously need fixing. Sure. Uh, yeah. in, as as for how the game will go, I think, you know, it, it's it, even even stylistically it doesn't match up well for them no. because. Saracens and like is one of the things that I really admire about them is just how disciplined they are and what they do. But but they have both wingers hugging both touchlines. Yeah, in they defense. stay very wide. Yeah, defense, all the time yeah, yeah. they hold their width brilliantly. Yeah, um, and they never ever get sucked in. Well, Leinster profited from that last season is just by finding little p- p- plays through the middle. Yeah, and doing it forwards all day. doing all, little offloads, little yeah. one twos between forwards and then a hole, and, then, um, yeah. and that's where the space is more often in that Saris defense. Absolutely, but Glasgow are a team that shirk the physical contact too often and flash it left or right there with reckless abandonment and that can be lead lead yeah. to lovely looking scores or horrible looking passes that yeah. can be intercepts and more it, it, and it, al- just... it also just just like one of their key key weapons they're going to try and get in the game is hog and yes yeah. it just can't see him being involved in this game in any mm-hmm. kind of a real way yeah just don't think it's going to be decided where he plays yeah so it's 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 matchup wise it's just not it's not good for them no it's always um, been a frustrating enough season for Hogg to be honest like he, even uh, last yeah. week went with uh, having replaced 
Hastings, he was on kickoff duty. He was taking drop kicks and stuff, right, and then yeah. never seeing the ball or rarely in open play. Mm. And he's just like he doesn't seem to be getting as much purchase off counter attack because te- teams aren't kicking it to him anyway. Yeah. They know not to do that. But even when he gets it, it seems to be smothered. There are very few options for him. Yeah, I'm so sort of waiting. Just, I think we all are to see what like we've had early hog where he mm-hmm. was this great fifteen, perhaps one of the best in the world, and he was so dangerous and he was always on the ball. And now he's got this gets got to the point in his career where we have to see, you know, Hog two point True. And what yeah. that guy's gonna be and what he's gonna bring. Is he gonna have a bit more nous to him? How is he gonna attack channels? How is he gonna evolve his game? Mm-hmm. We're still really waiting for that to happen for Can Hog. Go the big Ben Smith route to greatness by changing all the phys- don't not changing your physique, but uh, making allowances and just reading the play right and finding space. Yeah. It remains to be seen because Blair Hing- Blair Kinghorn's playing bloody well as well and like Scott like it'll be more exciting to see Scotland with Hogg obviously yeah but it's also like he needs to find something in club in clubland and I don't know if this week is going to be the one to do it like no. I, like the ideal winning if we're talking about winning conditions for Glasgow which is yeah like, they're few and far between but getting into a back and forth game that kind of goes end to end and and breaking them a few times with with quick good hands and stuff yeah but while also fronting up and managing to stifle some saris mm. you're hoping for drop balls from saris as well if you yeah. have accuracies you're hope you're hoping but, to shock them early doors you're gonna need to have guys step up like they did against cardiff but it's another level obviously against yeah. saracens but up against the atojis of the world you have to shock them by being competent in those areas winning some contacts getting yeah. Kebel and Gibbons yeah. into the game stuff some of their off yeah. loads, early doors yeah. drive, uh, drive Vunapola's back <laughs> absolutely um, yeah. all of that mm-hmm. and then obviously like it's all about tries you know you get yeah. a penalty you go to the corner it's one of the things that really annoyed me when you have underdog teams like mm-hmm. even in World Cups you see it a lot like yeah. when you have a team like of whatever in Namibia or someone like that or even someone a little better than that like a Tonga Japan, a Tonga, or, Japan against uh, against the US or no against the, the All Blacks There's, even if they have a, a penalty in the front of the post in the first five minutes as a result of how yeah. got to play they should not be kicking three never because they because 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 <laughs> yeah. first of all if you're talking points on a table this is bonus point system mm-hmm. your best chance of a losing bonus point is four tries yeah get them um, into a reckless if not yeah. defensively minded game yeah. and just score a load of tries it's, while it's, they score probably more it, tries as an underdog team points. it's always the correct play yeah. you're never going to rattle the team that are favourites with mm-hmm. an early three particularly pointer. a travelling under like I hate yeah. seeing it in the RDS and you see it so often the likes of Treviso come down and the first thing that happens is they kick three then six yeah. and then Leinster score five un- unanswered tries and it's like why are you kicking three then six I, like yeah. is it any better than being nilled really not really because no. it's not no more consequential and things like tournaments do come down to things like points accrued things like tries scored and yeah they need to be going for them so Glasgow to be fair that's never their problem they do no. go for tries yeah they, they actually look for passes that aren't on a lot of the time because yeah. they, they want to score a big wide try and go yeah. wide 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 try yeah like, ideally that's what's good that's what's happening for them but if I'm honest, all I see is them being shut out entirely, and Sari's bullying them. Yeah, and, and, and not necessarily thrashing them, but just getting it done, like, like they did this. Week. Yeah, looking at Sari's, there it seems like they could be good for three to four tries, maybe five tries. Like I don't even know. I think they're probably going to get five tries though. Um, five tries against Glasgow. I think so. I think it, like it could just be a two try. You know, seventeen. It could easily be that too. Actually, Actually like if they, they want to play that seem, game, they don't seem quite in the mood to cut loose at the moment. They could. They always can. Yeah, but what, what I'm just looking at the t- how the two teams stack up and what Glasgow, what they know yeah. Glasgow are going to want to try and do is get them into that thing, mm-hmm. ding battle. But if they shut Glasgow out entirely, that's what they did in their in, own in, tries in, in Scotland. Glasgow's mm-hmm. form was good. It was the early part of the season when things were going well for them. They were mm-hmm. running away with their their division in 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 the Pro 14, mm-hmm. and they came into that game and they played as good a game as you're going to see them play. It's actually one of their better performances of the season. I it think. was a massive but performance, even though Saracens. it only racked up three points against a very, very yeah. well drilled, organized, Who, suppressing Saris team. Yeah, they, ma- they managed them. everything that Glasgow did. They Put were the lead blanket over it. them yeah. and just didn't allow them mm-hmm. any of that space and, and saw the win and didn't even let them lose in bonus point. It was yeah. clinical. It was yeah. very impressive was championship stuff yeah, yeah. from, from Saris. Yeah. And I expect something similar this week, just to functionally get it. Done. I do, but I also yeah. think a few flashy tries for their home fans will be on their mind too. More yeah, so, like as maybe. much as it's great to go up to Glasgow and play that game there. Mm. This time, I think they may still sub. Like I, I, I'm fearful for Glasgow. Basically, I can see a cricket score somehow. Yeah. I like some, and I'm fearful need, just because Liam Williams. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm just not impressed with what Glasgow have been doing all, all season, but particularly recently, and even making as hard and making Cardiff look as difficult as they as they yeah. did. Is, does, does not bode well for you're starting to see some holes to Dave Rennie's game 
And yeah. it was one thing when he was yeah. in charge of the Chiefs and he had, you know, Mackenzie and Cruden to work with and Nessam mm. and all of these, probably Retallick and he, yeah, all of these players, great players. Yeah. But they were playing a lovely free-flowing style that yeah. really worked for it's them. what made us fall in love with them. Yeah. It's what made yeah. Yeah, Leo Cullen and Leinster fall in love with the model as well. Totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, it's one of those things where when you actually go in somewhere else and you have to build something, mm-hmm. like it's not there, you have to build it, you have yeah. to develop players. You have they to spent a lot of time building it around Finn though because that like Finn That's Russell throws those, throws those passes and he was part of the reason why Glasgow was an enticing option for Dave Rennie to go to and try and make a Chiefs style thing happen. But now with Finn gone to Rassing, Rassing are looking a bit more loose and basketball style but they tried to replace him with a young man who's not, who's not shy of throwing that pass but like it's just left them a little soft. I think their pack has disimproved over the court. That's where I think Dave Rennie's probably been at, like he in, he, 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 on a bad cro- Well, like he inherited what was a very good Glasgow pack, and I don't think well he, he inherited. Stuff. I think a dwindling one in the sense mm. that they never properly replaced Nakarawa and True. Kellogg. And True, that yeah. was like that second row now is Swinson and Johnny Gray. Is that really it's anywhere just, near the just same? Nowhere near the same yeah. caliber as those two boys who were all class and yeah. very physical both of them yeah. like Ali Kellogg you can associate him with being that monster who makes things dirty but like Nakarawa as much as being the flashy highlight guy he's huge and yeah. very physical as yeah. well like that, that was a, a serious combination and it meant their scrum was strong yeah. it, it surprised it even that would, that would be where teams would look at them and think maybe we can get an edge there and then very often mm. it would just be parody or to their more. credit this year they fe- they have a find in Ali Kebel who is just yeah hundred percent they're starting loose head now and, mm-hmm. and is very good in the in the scrum and very good in the contact. Mm-hmm. And he has, he has like a little flavour of Keen Healy to him, not to give too high praise. But <laughs> he could um, get there. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's he looks a very good player and he's mm-hmm. very much someone that they're gonna have to look to in their pack to, to yeah. get things done yeah. if, if if anything will be done. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I think we'll move on. I think we'll move on. Saris yeah. are looking good though. <laughs> and looking yes. scary as tournament uh, in terms of contenders, Saris are one of my one of my yeah, current favourites think, think, thinking about the game a little bit that's yeah. what I like to see from this week from them they're just making minor adjustments to what they got wrong last year and, yeah. and what they have been getting wrong sometimes true Yeah. so that's it. yeah it's all purring along it's that time of year folks it is for the purring thank you very much for watching uh, if you're new here please hit like and subscribe down below if you want to see new more videos and all that kind of lovely stuff but also please uh, leave some comments down below because we We enjoy the chat.